Can you hear me? So this is a Foscation for Evasive Function, uh, and it's a joint work with Boaz Barak, Nir Bitansky, Ran Kanetti, Yael Kalai, and Amit Sahai. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, the task of program of Foscation is to write programs in a way that hides their secret implementation details. So let me give an example. So uh, consider a program that has uh, some secret key for a signature scheme, and it uses it to sign approved documents. Now, we may want to find an obfuscated version of this program that has the same functionality, but still no one can use this obfuscated program to sign unapproved documents. So the concept of obfuscation has numerous applications, both in the theory of cryptography and also in practice. And since in every application we want the obfuscation to hide something slightly different, then what we need is a definition of secure obfuscation that uh, is useful in as many applications as possible. So such a definition was uh, suggested by Barak et al. It's known as virtual black box, or VBB. And intuitively, it says that an obfuscated program should be as useful as a black box that computes the function. So formally, we say that uh, an algorithm O is an obfuscator for a family of functions, FK. If for every adversary, there exists a simulator such that for every key and every predicate of this key, if the adversary can learn the predicate from the obfuscated program, then the simulator can also learn the same predicate given only black box access to the function. So the notion of virtual black box is indeed extremely useful, but it turns out that it's not always achievable. So Barak and I will show that there exist concrete uh, functions of families that cannot be VBB obfuscated, and their impossibility result is even stronger in the sense that even if we restrict ourselves to specific applications like obfuscating encryption or signature algorithms, and even if we only consider algorithms in very low complexity classes, still uh, VBB obfuscation is impossible. So things are even worse for uh, auxiliary input obfuscation, where we believe that all pseudo-entropic functions are unobfuscatable, and these already include many of the cryptographic functionalities that we want to obfuscate. So we also have some limited positive results for VBB obfuscation. We know how to obfuscate very simple functions, such as uh, point functions and their extensions. And as Svika just told you, we also have constructions of VBB for all functions in idealized models. However, we know that for specific function families, this construction can never satisfy VBB in the standard model. So this brings us to uh, one of the central open questions in the field of obfuscation, and that is to categorize which function families can be VBB obfuscated, or alternatively, maybe to get positive results for classes of functionalities that are as rich as possible. So we address this question by looking at a, a specific class of functions that we call evasive functions. So we say that a family of Boolean functions is evasive, if for every input x, the probability that a random function in the family maps x to 1 is negligible. So it will also be useful to think about uh, an equivalent definition that says that any efficient adversary that gets black box access to a random function in the family cannot find a preimage of 1 with more than negligible probability. So what are, what are the applications of evasive function obfuscation? So first of all, notice that evasive functions generalize all of the function families that we do know how to obfuscate today. And I also want to give you kind of a cute example for a concrete application of evasive function obfuscation. So imagine that you have some uh, buggy piece of software that works very well on most inputs, but there are some bad inputs that cause this software to crash. Okay. So what you probably want to do is publish a patch for the software that kind of recognizes the bad inputs and filters them out. Now, because not all machines in the world are being patched in the same time, you should probably obfuscate this patch such that no one can use it in order to find out what the bad inputs are. So kind of intuitively, we're uh, assuming that the set of bad inputs is evasive in the sense that if you only have black box access to the software, uh, you can't learn the bad inputs. And one way to formalize this, which may not be the most realistic way, is to think about this patch as being chosen randomly from some, function or some family of evasive functions. So we also, have an, we also had another motivation for considering evasive functions, and that is that we don't know of any impossibility results for VBB obfuscation of evasive functions, and uh, more accurately, we don't, we don't know of any impossibilities when we consider the right notion of VBB obfuscation. So let me clarify. So the definition of VBB comes in a few different flavors, 
uh, we can consider uh, obfuscation, obfuscating Turing machines uh, or circuits, and obfuscating Turing machines will always be more difficult. And we can also distinguish between uh, worst case and average case notions. So worst case obfuscation means that we want security for every single function in the family, whereas average, ca average case obfuscation, we just want security for a randomly chosen function. So I won't have time to go into much details, but in the paper we show that the impossibility result of Barak et al actually does extend for evasive functions for all of these notions except for the notion of average case obfuscation for circuits. So since we are interested in getting some general positive results, this will be the notion that we'll consider for the rest of this talk. So uh, in this work, we have a few different types of contributions. Uh, uh, first of all, we give some new definitions for evasive function obfuscation, and we study the relations between those definitions and VBB. Uh, we also construct obfuscators for a large class of evasive functions that describe the set of zeros of a low degree polynomial. And uh, we do this based on multilinear maps. And finally, we show some uh, interesting and maybe slightly surprising connections between evasive functions and a weaker notion of obfuscation called virtual gray box. Specifically, we show that virtual gray box obfuscation for evasive function actually implies virtual gray box obfuscation for all functions. So let me start by talking about, uh, uh, in a bit more depth, about the definition of evasive function obfuscation. So as I mentioned before, we'll be concentrating on average case obfuscation. So the notion of average case VBB is defined very similarly to the worst case notion that we already seen, except that now instead of quantifying over all keys, we just require that the probability over a random key that the adversary learns the predicate of the key is the same as the probability that the simulator learns the same predicate. So let's try to interpret this definition in the context of evasive functions. So now our simulator is getting Oracle access to a random evasive function. However, such Oracle is pretty much useless because every query that the simulator will make will just return zero with overwhelming probability. So uh, this means that uh, from an obfuscation of a random function in the family, uh, you cannot learn absolutely anything about the key. Now, of course, in applications, we'll, all cons we'll also consider honest users that do know something about the key, and uh, this means that they can use the obfuscation uh, in some meaningful way. However, for, against such user, we will not require any security. So this was uh, the notion of average case VBB, and uh, I also want to tell you about a new notion that we introduced called input hiding obfuscation. So we say that an obfuscation is input hiding if for every adversary that is getting an obfuscation of a random function in the family, the adversary cannot use this obfuscation to find a pre-image of one. So first of all, notice that unlike the notion of VBB, input hiding obfuscation only really makes sense for evasive functions, simply because if the function is not evasive, then it's always easy to find a pre-image of one. And another interesting thing is that even though this feels like a very weak notion, we show that it's actually not implied by average case VBB, simply because even if an adversary can find a pre-image of zero, it still doesn't mean that it can learn a predicate of the key, and this may happen when the pre-image set of one is of super polynomial size. So that was a bit about definition. Let me uh, move on and tell you about our constructions. So we construct uh, both average case VBB and input hiding obfuscation for a subclass of evasive functions that describe the set of roots of a low degree multivariate polynomial. So let me explain what this means. So every function family in our class will be defined by a polynomial Q over ZP. And think about P as being uh, exponential in the security parameter and think about the degree of Q as being polynomial. So the key for our function k is just a vector of L m elements in zp, and the input x is a vector of n elements. And now the function fk uh, outputs 1 if the polynomial q evaluated on the elements of k and x evaluates to 0, and otherwise the function outputs 0. So first of all, uh, let me uh, tell you why are these function families really evasive. And the intuition here is that because q is of low degree, then it will not have too many roots. A bit more formally, for every input x, if the polynomial q, when we fix the input x, is not identically zero, then by the schwarz zippel lemma, we have that uh, the function only outputs one for a negligible fraction of the keys. This is exactly what we need. A little problem is that for some values of x, the polynomial may become identically zero, uh, and then our function outputs one for all keys. So this means that uh, these function families are not exactly evasive, 
but uh, they're kind of very close. Uh, we can show that they're uh, evasive function translated by some public functions. And uh, for our purposes, this difference will not be very important. So from now on, I'm just going to assume that these functions really are evasive. So as I said, we have two constructions. Uh, our first construction is of input hiding obfuscation. This construction works for every function family that is defined by a polynomial Q that is given as an arithmetic circuit of polynomial size and polynomial degree. And we prove that this construction is secure based on the existence of one-way graded encodings. So this is kind of the minimal hardness assumption you can do on a graded encoding scheme. We also have a construction of average case VBB uh, that works for a slightly smaller class of functions where the polynomial Q is given by an arithmetic circuit of logarithmic depth. And uh, this construction is secure based on a new assumption that we introduced called perfectly hiding graded encoding. So as I said, our constructions are uh, based on graded encoding schemes introduced by Garg, Gentry, and Halevi. Uh, if you've been to the previous talk, you uh, already heard what those are. Let me just uh, quickly re review. So, so we'll be considering symmetric graded encoding schemes, which means that every encoding will have a level, which is just an integer between 0 and some maximum level d. And we denote an encoding of every ring element alpha using uh, these brackets. We also have the standard operations of our encodings, addition, negation, multiplication, and zero tests. The only thing that uh, is going to be different than the standard formulation of graded encoding is that we're going to assume there is some uh, public function that can encode every ring element. So in the standard formulation of graded encoding, we usually just require that there is a, public, that there is a function that samples encodings of random elements. And we can get a candidate construction for a graded encoding with such a public encoding procedure based on a slight modification of the construction of Coron et al. So let me tell you a bit about uh, how our input hiding obfuscators look like. So our obfuscator will start by sampling uh, public parameters for a graded encoding scheme, where the maximal level is just the degree of the polynomial Q. Then our obfuscator is going to output uh, an obfuscated circuit that has encodings of the elements of the key hard-coded. And in order to evaluate this obfuscated circuit on some input x, the evaluator will also need to encode the elements of x. So now the obfuscated circuit is just going to uh, evaluate the polynomial Q under these encodings uh, using the addition, negated, negation, and multiplication operations. And notice that the level of the encodings grow exactly like the degree of the polynomial that we're evaluating. And this means that eventually we end up with an encoding of the evaluated polynomial Q in the last level D. And now this obfuscated circuit can just test if this is an encoding of zero and output the result. So notice that this construction is much simpler than recent construction of obfuscation you may have seen. Uh, we're just basically using the encoding scheme as is. Uh, in particular, there is no mechanism that, that forces the adversary to evaluate the correct function. So this is okay because when the key is random, because our adversaries will only be able to evaluate evasive functions of these keys, uh, we can prove that they don't learn too much information. So we show that our input hiding scheme is secure based on the assumption that the encoding uh, scheme is one way. So assume that there exists an adversary uh, that is given, that breaks input hiding, it's given an obfuscation, which is just an encoding of the key, and it outputs x, which is a preimage of one. So now we have that the key k is a root of the polynomial q with the input x fixed. And uh, from this, we can actually uh, reconstruct at least one of the elements of k and, uh, and invert the encoding function. So let me move on to uh, the last part and tell you about some interesting connections between evasive functions and a uh, notion of obfuscation called virtual gray box. So virtual gray box obfuscation, or VGB, was introduced by uh, Bitansky and Canetti, and it's defined very similarly to virtual black box, except that now we allow the simulator to be computationally unbounded, but we still restrict the simulator to making only a polynomial number of queries to the oracle. So we know that uh, the notion of VGB is uh, somewhere in the middle between virtual black box and indistinguishability obfuscation, but we still don't fully understand uh, in what applications uh, VGB is useful. So Bitansky and Canetti show that you can get composable VGB obfuscators for point functions from a strong variant of the DDH assumption. So this is something that we don't know how to do with VBB obfuscation. And even though these obfuscators only satisfy VGB security, they still found many applications. 
In contrast, we know that for some function families, VGB security is a completely meaningless notion. So consider, for example, a family of pseudo-random functions. Because the VGB simulator is computationally unbounded, then after making just a few Oracle queries, it may be able to completely learn the key of the function. And this means that our VGB obfuscation can just give out the key in the clear. So the question is really, for what function families is the notion of virtual gray box meaningful? And we showed that at least for average case VGB, the answer is closely related to evasive functions. So our first observation is that for evasive functions, the notion of average case VBB and average case VBB are equivalent. And the reason is that if the simulator is only making a polynomial number of queries to a random evasive function, then it really doesn't matter if the simulator is computationally unbounded. Uh, still, this oracle will be useless just like in the case of VBB. So we know that at least for evasive function, the notion of average case VGB is meaningful. Now, what about all the other functions? So we proved the following theorem. We proved that the existence of average case VGB for all evasive functions implies the existence of a slightly weaker form of average case VG VGB for all functions. So uh, this weaker form of VGB means that we allow the simulator to make a slightly super polynomial, super polynomial number of queries. And we also let the obfuscators, the obfuscator itself be inefficient. So uh, notice that still we require that the obfusca obfuscated circuit itself is efficient, otherwise our notion uh, will be meaningless. And if you really don't like this uh, inefficient obfuscator business, then uh, we also have this uh, corollary of the theorem that says that average case VGB for evasive functions together with indistinguishability obfuscation for all functions, again implies average case VGB for all functions, this time with efficient obfuscators. And the idea here is just to, uh, instead of using the inefficient obfuscator, just use the indistinguishability obfuscator. And based on the fact that it's the best possible obfuscator, uh, we prove that it also satisfies VGB security. Okay. So let me tell you about uh, kind of the main idea behind the proof of this theorem. So we show that for every function family fk, not necessarily evasive, fk can be represented as the sum of two functions, gk and hk, where the function g can be learned by a VGB simulator, and the function h is evasive. So this gives us kind of a very simple way of obfuscating f. Uh, so because g can be learned by the VGB simulator, the obfuscation of f can just include the description of g in the clear. And for the function age, we can just use our, obfusca our obfuscation for evasive functions. So really, the interesting part in the proof of this theorem is proving that such a decomposition of f uh, always exists. And we do this uh, using some ideas from learning theory. So uh, imagine a high dimensional space that includes uh, all Boolean functions. And the points here represent all the functions in our family. And the red point represents the function fk that we want to obfuscate. Now imagine that you are a VGB simulator, you have unbounded computational power, and you want to learn as much as possible about the function f by making only a polynomial number of queries to this function. So what you should do is you should find some input uh, x that splits this uh, 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 family of functions as evenly as possible and query the function on this input. This will eliminate roughly half of the functions in the family. And then you can do this again and again until you reach a point where you cannot find any input that gives you a significant amount of information about this function. So uh, intuitively, what we show is that at this point, all of the functions that you're left with are kind of very close together. Think, for example, about point functions. So what you can do now is just pick one of these functions at random and call it g. So notice that g is really learnable by the VGB simulator. And now, because all the functions are very close together, we show that the difference between f and g that we previously called h is going to be an evasive function. So this is the uh, main idea behind the proof of the theorem. And uh, that's it. Thank you.